In a lot of cities, the issue of dying is never at the forefront. That's really because I think in cities and in, in developing places, you're always talking about regenerating, talking about how to be alive, that you do not remember or even want to talk about that part about dying, which you know somehow people associate with very negative words like decay, loss. Both Sides Now is an arts-based project that uh, looks at the issue of uh, end of life. Both Lian Foundations and Ang Chimo Foundations approached us. They wanted us to deal with this project using uh, arts-based activities. When we first met with some of the elderly, we start talking about what the Void Deck meant to them and they actually expressed their wish that if the Void Deck could be cleaner, less dirty, more colourful, not so plain, if there were plants, if it was like a kampong. She said that she took the aeroplane here, right? She took the aeroplane. So at first, it was going to be about the food that you would want to serve at your own funeral, but it changed. I discovered that most of them were not cooking anymore. They were eating uh, outside and they were not eating maybe all three meals a day. The cooking session started last month, so now it's like it has been what? Five sessions already, sharing recipes and then uh, prepare the ingredients, cutting. It's like kampung community where everybody, I mean, like involved. Now they have the time to cook, but they're cooking less because they live alone. When she said to me that she doesn't cook very much now, uh, and I would like prod her a little bit more, I said, mm, but you must have had some favorite recipes. And very readily, she just said, Oh, my chicken curry, my sons always ask me to cook that. And then I said, Well, that's it, we're going to do it. <laughs> when we started gathering together to eat at the Void Deck, generally as a group, it was quite difficult to generate conversation. But as we moved along, the cooks who cooked felt a lot of pride that their food were being eaten. It then helped us to deal with the other issue of how to let them appreciate the moment of now. Because only when they appreciate the moment of living now, then they can start to feel that, you know, as they progress into that moment of death, there's something that they can feel proud and feel dignified about. Huotong actually literally means, to me, it means Huotong. The essence of living is really to move around and using the element of sound, using everyday objects like the pillow and the cane, vocal expressions of uh, whispering, shouting, to incorporate it into a life work. It's really about liberating yourself without thinking so much. Like maybe in the morning, they could give a big shout. In a very therapeutic sense, they are open enough to let go. The project I'm doing in Terblanga is called Restore. The idea was to um, invite the residents to create their own unique um, artworks. In some cases, they explored a game format, and in other cases, they, they created like a series of photographs. One of the, uh, the seniors, his name is uh, Jason. He has a wedding basket, um, which was passed down from four generations. And if his son gets married, you know, it will pass on to his child. 
So he actually took photographs of um, very um, ordinary objects but are very meaningful to him. I think this is very nice. The idea of restoring faith and hope into a community and it can be in very very small ways. What we invited the neighbourhood residents to do is come and sit in a makeshift uh, photo studio right in the void deck, in a space where they're used to coming and going all the time, but to take a moment, sit down, um, take a portrait with us. You know, as soon as we said portrait, some uh, residents just went straight there. They immediately say, oh yeah, you know, yeah, I can take for my, you know, prepare for my wig. And we had some uh, residents who even said that she already prepared her, um, her own funeral package. But the one thing she hasn't done yet is take that, that photo. What is that image that's going to look back at the people who come to your wake? That might be too heavy loaded a question. That's the, the challenge and also the privilege of working on projects like this. When you're asking to engage on such an intimate and sensitive topic, it's that kind of acknowledgement that with every single person, there's a completely different other whole story about death and dying that you may not have imagined. And the arts allows that kind of space, a safe space for you to share those kind of stories. It's not just about, have I prepared how my end of life is? It's really uh, searching and trying to understand the connections you have with the place, with the people, with things around you. It's spending your time listening to someone, spending your time really being with someone. How to live well, and how to live well.